Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brownie and I'm one half of the Indecisive Readers. I will address the hat situation indoors in a minute, but today I am here to film the Good Place book tag. And basically I am wearing a hat because I feel like my dress kind of channels Tahani from The Good Place. I'll put a picture if I can find of her wearing a similar outfit. And whilst I don't think Tahani would wear a hat indoors, it is very hot. My hair is either flat or messy. I am going to put it up because it is so hot. In some ways, I am living in my own bad place. It is very warm. Hang on. Hey Siri. Oh my god, Janet. What do you think of Janet? Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? How hot is it? Hot enough. It appears to be partly cloudy right now, with a temperature of 32 degrees. So yeah, tis warm. We are basically in the bad place. Is hell not this hot? Anyway, yeah, brief transformation now that I've introduced it, explained it. I don't think Tahani would have bra straps shown under her dress, but I also feel like in the ideal good place, she wouldn't need a bra. So we are definitely in the bad place. <laughs> Anyway, this tag was originally created by Bookish Constellations. I will link their original video down below and I will also put the questions down below. But yeah, I'm just going to get on and answer the questions. So the first question is Eleanor and did his best character development. For this, I have chosen Jana from Meat Market by Juno Dawson. This is a YA contemporary about a girl who goes into modelling and then realises it's not all it's kind of glamorised to be. So at the beginning she's just kind of like an average London girl and then obviously she goes into modelling and is kind of catapulted into stardom and it just goes a bit insane and she kind of forgets about everyone at home. She tries to kind of satisfy them by sending them lots of rich gifts but ultimately kind of forgets that they just want her instead and the end finishes on like a really nice feminist note and so I definitely feel like she goes through some nice character development and I would really really recommend the book. The second question is based on Chidi who is definitely my like my spirit animal. He's so indecisive and obviously that's the channel name but yeah I cannot make a decision to save my life. I'm constantly anxious about making the wrong decision. He ends up annoying people because of his indecision and maybe that should tell me I need to make better decisions. But anyway, the question is, a book that made you anxious reading it. For this, I have chosen The House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This is a dark kind of gothic fairy tale retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses, where the sisters are slowly dying out, but then quickly dying out. And one of the deaths seems less natural than the rest and so then the main character Annalie decides to investigate what is behind these murders well she's classed in murders everyone else says they're just cursed but this made me anxious because it was much more horror than I was expecting I read it after a lot of people had so I knew that there was a lot of horror kind of going into it but it still made me a bit creeped out I'm not a big horror person and therefore when there were kind of ghosty dead people and horrible moths and trapped people being trapped in rooms and also it was just very psychological it did mess with my head a lot and therefore I'm answering it with this. The next question is based on Tahani and it is a rich ignorant judgmental character who has humbled. For this I have chosen Eris from Seven Devils by Elizabeth May and Laura Lamb. This came out last week so I expect most of you haven't read it but Eris is a ex-princess turned rebel. Basically the book revolves around five female rebels who have decided to fight against the crown because the crown are up to some shady stuff and obviously just generally the world is going wrong because people are hoarding power. And Eris specifically was the chosen daughter to succeed the emperor kind of guy but then she fakes her own death and is now a rebel against the crown and I think she's a really interesting character. It's a duology and 
I am so interested to see where her character goes in the sequel because something happened to her at the end of the first book and I was very sad and I just want to know she's okay. Question four is inspired by Jason and it is a character who's smarter or wiser than they seem. For this I have chosen Charlie Widdershin from A Pinch of Magic series by Michelle Harrison. A Pinch of Magic follows three sisters called Fliss, Betty and Charlie and they are all kind of ranging in age from about 16 to about 7 and therefore as the youngest Charlie is kind of expected not to be the cleverest, she can't necessarily speak properly because she just uses ain't and was and you know the kind of kid language but sometimes she actually makes really important decisions and she sticks by her sisters throughout everything and also sometimes she makes the better judgments so if they come across a bad character or a character who seems bad she actually sees the good in them. Question five is based on Michael and the question is a book you would want to be the architect for to make it more intricate or a world made perfectly down to every blade of grass. For this I have chosen to answer The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon because it is one of my favourite books of all time. I think the world building in it is immense and I mean that's why the book is so big but there is just so much to it. There are lots of different worlds that kind of collide into one story. It follows four timelines, well four characters doing their own thing and each of those are in like a different part of the world. Each is doing their own adventure, meeting new people and I'm on my second reread and every time I reread it I find out new stuff and I just think there is nothing more Samantha Shannon could have added to this. She knows exactly what the marriage rituals are, she has to justify those rituals and if she can't justify them they're not there. She knows the coins they use, the beliefs they use, each belief has different stories and oh, I just love it, it's so good. Question six is based on Janet and that is your favourite non-human character and bonus points if they don't adhere to the binary. For this I have chosen Firion, 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 from The Girl Who Drank the Moon. He is the tiny little dragon who thinks he's a big dragon. Basically The Girl Who Drank the Moon follows one girl called Luna, her grandmother stroke witch stroke kind of parental figure called Zan, a swamp monster and this tiny little dragon. Now all of them are wonderful and all of them are not technically human but I just love Firion's optimism and how brave he is and how much he's like protective even though he's probably only that big. It's just he's wonderful and I always love a cute little dragon. The next question is The Good Place and it is a book that should have been perfect for you but kind of fell flat. For this I have A Fire and Sars by Audrey Colthurst. This is about a girl with magic powers who falls in love with a princess who loves horses and they have all sorts of gay romance. And I thought this sounded amazing, it was everything I kind of wanted in a book but I could have answered this for the one I'd like to be the architect for to add more world building because it just fell flat. Like just the world building wasn't there. Like I have nothing to criticise apart from the fact that it didn't exist. Like I have nothing to say that it went wrong, just it could have existed more. Also the relationship itself was fine, the friendship was good, I enjoyed it, but then it went from 0 to 100 really quick. The princess with magic powers had never kissed anyone before and then they slept together that night and it was fine and it was perfect and it all worked and I'm like, it doesn't quite work that way, does it? The next question is based on The Bad Place and it was a book that should be used to torture people or should be used to torture you. I could answer this with Aurora Burning, which is the second book in the Aurora Cycle by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I just hate that book. The characters in it are so sarcastic and horny and pretty, but everyone else likes it so it wouldn't be a good torture book. A good torture book I feel like is a tome, so you could go for an old classic. I didn't enjoy The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I rated it about two stars. I don't know if it deserved it because it just 
it was really really cringy cringy is the right word but i just oh. there was sex everywhere which is the point and then they were falling for each other but couldn't explain it and then they did explain it and then they didn't accept it and so they started following each other and it was just it was wrong i didn't enjoy it everyone else seems to have enjoyed it but i don't like romance and that was another one i didn't enjoy i mean you could also get them to read go set a watchman because that was so bad that was an unnecessary book like twilight's uh counterparts what's what they called midnight sun and life and death maybe Books that shouldn't exist are the books you can use to torture people with. I mean, I understand some people want to read them for the nostalgia like with The Twilight, but Ghost Etta Watchman just, there was a reason why it wasn't published in the first place. For philosophy class, the prompt is to choose a book that turned a trope slash idea on its head or did it in a creative way. For this, I have chosen You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson because it just really flips and messes with the idea of the prom queen. So the main character, Liz, is running to be prom queen, but she is poor, black and in the LGBT plus community. Now, obviously, one of those things alone you might sometimes see as prom queen, but all of them together makes for an unusual candidate and a candidate who may not usually be supported but I really really enjoyed it. The romance in this was amazing and it just made me feel good and also it didn't have one of those stupid um makeovers at the end where they straightened her hair, they took her glasses off, they gave her a whole complete makeover, they just let her exist as she was and I just really really appreciated it. I thought it was a great cherry on top of a good book. So the penultimate question is spoilers and that is the best twist or twist to a book or series. Now I couldn't immediately think of any and I still can't really but I'm going to answer it with The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty because the last 70 pages in this really surprised me mostly because I thought it wasn't going to get dramatic but then it did and then the sequel has done the same. The last 100 pages were just insane. And now I have the final one on my TBR and I'm frightened to read it because I don't know where it's gonna go. So yeah, that series is good and would definitely answer this question. Now the final question is the series finale and that is the book you loved so much it broke your heart when it ended. Of course, for this, I have to answer the Septimus Heap series and the final book is Fire by Angie Sage. I have to answer it with this because the final book probably came out five or six years ago and I still haven't read it. It was my absolute favourite childhood series. I would reread the books all the time. I was so excited for the final one to come out, but I didn't read it because I was frightened for the series to end. It's now been five or six years, I've had the book on my shelf for that whole time, but I haven't picked it up because then it's over and I don't want that to happen. But I have been rereading the books this year and i am read up to the fifth one and so I need to read the sixth one so then I can read the final one but I'm hesitant again because I don't want them to finish but like I want to know what happens. And I know I can reread them again and I know there's another series so I know they survive and everything but they're my babies. I love them so much and it's just like going home when I read those books and yeah I never want to see the back of them and I just, I, you know what, I just hope the author's not going to come out with anything dodgy because that would really break my heart. So yes, that was the Good Place book tag. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you want to join in yourself. If you do join in, please let me know tag me everything i'm not tagging anyone because i never know who to tag but if you want tagging let me know and i will consider you tagged if you enjoyed this please consider giving it a thumbs up subscribe if you're not already comment down below to let me know you're here and i will see you in the next video bye